the other day i wandered into this used bookstore and i came across this really fascinating and interesting book that i knew i had to buy and bring home with me i sat down with this book flipping through its pages taking off items from this checklist that i had already completed in my 20 something years of existence when I saw the last item in this list, that's when I realized I had in fact become old and bored. A third of our waking adult lives is spent at work. That's a lot of time wasted if you're unhappy in your job. Surely it's better to try to achieve your dream even if you don't ever quite make it than spend your life wondering what if. Ten years ago, if you would have asked me what I want to become when I grow up, I would have said an artist. Fortunately, I did not know how to become an artist, let alone make money from it. So I went the complete opposite way. I decided to pursue computer science. Five years ago, when I was still a university student, if you were to ask me what I wanted to do as a software engineer, my answer wouldn't have been so different from the past years. I would have said that I'd like to work in one of those web design studios that build these award-winning websites that you see on awards.com, combining design and code in such an interesting and unique way. Not that I was ever unhappy with my job, but what if my work was even more fulfilling and it actually satisfied my creative spirit? So I'm not thinking of completely changing my career overnight to become an artist or whatever. Instead, I've been trying to add more elements into my work process that make it more creative and more enjoyable for me. And YouTube has been such a big part of this journey. Just last week, I built this website where I got to experiment with the design. But I don't want to stop here. I want to take my design skills to the next level. When you start learning a new skill, for example, learning to paint with oil colors, you begin by imitating the work of others to understand their techniques and processes. And I believe this act of imitation to learn new concepts can be applied to web design as well. So my plan here is to find things that I like in web design online and try to replicate them myself. The first thing that I want to learn is how do you make those custom cursors that you might have seen in websites. They look really nice and also add this touch of interactivity to your websites. I don't want to do anything crazy yet. Let's start with the simplest one that I see over here. Here you might see this little black circle that just follows around the cursor really smoothly. So the simplest way to do that is with the help of CSS. So you can add a custom cursor icon with the help of the cursor style and you can use any image here that will work as your icon. But the problem with this approach here is that I don't want to replace my actual cursor. I want another cursor that follows my actual cursor around. So for that, we need to make use of JavaScript. So instead of replacing the traditional cursor, I'm going to create a new div element that is going to act as the custom cursor. Now I'm going to add a couple of styles to this div. I'm trying to make this look like that black circle that you saw previously. So I'm setting its width and its height to 40 pixels and I'm going to set its background color to black. I'm also going to set the border radius to 50% so that it actually looks like a circle. Now to make this cursor follow around my real cursor, I need to add an event listener onto this document on the mouse move event. So whenever my mouse moves, I'm going to set the position of this cursor to the position of the real cursor. So for that, all you need to do is set the left and top CSS properties to the X and Y coordinates of the mouse. One more thing, you also need to set the position of this custom cursor to absolute so that the left and top properties actually affect the position. Now this custom cursor actually follows around the real cursor. Just one tiny change here so that the real cursor sits in the center of the custom cursor. You also need to set the pointer events CSS style to none on the custom cursor to make sure that this custom cursor does not interfere with other mouse events on the page. Or else you won't really be able to click on buttons or links because this custom cursor will come in between the actual cursor and the link. 
we have a custom cursor now but the problem here is we don't really have that smooth following effect that we wanted for that we need to tweak our javascript logic a little bit we don't want the position of the custom cursor to instantly match with the real cursor. We want there to be a certain delay between which the custom cursor actually follows and then eventually joins the real cursor. For this, we are going to make use of something known as linear interpolation. You might have come across linear interpolation in your math classes, but here's a simple explanation. Linear interpolation is a technique that is used to find the intermediate values between two given values. So in our case, the two given values are going to be the start position of the cursor and the end position of the cursor. Since we don't want the custom cursor to just follow it instantaneously, we're going to find the in-between values between the start point and the end point. So instead of a custom cursor moving 100% of the way in the given time, we want it to move 10% closer each time so that it has this delayed and smooth following effect. If you want to learn about linear interpolation more, I've linked two videos in the description box below. You can check them out. And here's how the JavaScript code is going to look like. So I've created a function animate here. And then I call this animate function the first time. Inside of this animate function is where I'm going to update the position of the custom cursor. I don't want to call this animate function with the help of a set interval. Instead, I'm going to make use of the request animation frame method for smoother animations. If you watched my audio visualizer video, you might remember using this function there. So inside of the animate function, I'm going to call request animation frame and pass it the animate function. This just means that every time our browser repaints, the animate function will be called. And then inside of that animation function, we are again scheduling this animate function to be called before the next paint. This is a more efficient approach for creating animations instead of using set interval or set timeout. Now let's add the actual logic of updating the cursor's position. So cursor x is going to be the difference between the position of the custom cursor and the real cursor multiplied by 0.1 so that it moves 10% closer instead of 100% of the entire distance. Similarly, I'm going to set the y coordinate and then finally, I'm going to set the left and the top properties of this custom cursor. And there you go. We finally have this really cool, smooth cursor following effect. There's just one more thing here. When I go back to my inspiration website, you might be able to see that when I hover the cursor over a link, the custom cursor changes shape. Black circle grows in size. And then inside of this black circle, you have another white circle. So let's implement this one final thing. Since we want an inner circle that only appears in hover states, I'm going to add another div inside of the custom cursor div. And I'm going to set the width and height properties of this inner circle to zero initially. And I'm also going to set its background color to white. One more thing, since we want it to be a circle eventually, I'm going to set the border radius to 50%. Just a few more styles here, setting the position to absolute and the pointer events to none. Now I'm going to add two event listeners on the document on mouse over and mouse out. So when the mouse over event occurs, we want the custom cursor and the inner cursor to grow in size. And when mouse out occurs, we want to reset it back to its original size. Since I only want this effect to take place on links, I'm going to check if the target of this event is an anchor link. If it is, then I'm going to set the height and width of the custom cursor to 50 pixels from the previous 40 pixels. And I'm also going to set the height and width of the inner cursor to 20 pixels from the previous zero pixels. And inside of the mouse out event, I am going to reset the height and widths back to their original height and widths. But there's this one problem here. The transition between the mouse over and mouse out effects is quite janky. It immediately grows into size and the moment you step out, it immediately resets back into the original size instead of smoothly transitioning into the bigger size and the smaller size. So for that, we are going to make use of the transition property here. Now these transitions will take 0.3 seconds and they will follow this ease out curve so that the transitions are more smooth. So there you go. That's the very first thing that I got to learn in this journey. And I'm very glad that I also got to share it with you. In the future, you can expect more of such videos about web design and animation. That's all I had for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.